I want to talk to uh, my colleague, Kate Garraway, who presents Midmorning Presenter on Global Station Smooth Radio, amongst many other things. You will know her, of course, from uh, Good Morning Britain as well and much else besides. Kate is nominated for an NTA award uh, for her ITV documentary, Caring for Derek. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to give it a plug before we go anywhere, Kate. Voting is open still at nationaltvawards.com until midday tomorrow. So uh, if you wish to go and take a look at that, please do. Uh, Kate, thanks for joining me in the studio. Uh, Lovely to be here. Well, the reason I invited you in is I saw um, a little piece you did on Instagram the other day um, talking about the, the the experience of caring for a loved one when either, mm. in your like in your case, something very unexpected and incredibly difficult happens or because of an ongoing disability mm. or because of an ageing parent or mm. whatever it happens to be, that we really don't talk enough about the pressures mm. the carers are under, do we? And there are millions and millions of carers. Exactly, exactly, Sheila. And actually, you said the Instagram, I was quite conflicted about posting anything about the documentary, not that I'm not very proud of it and the team that, you know, made it with me. Um, but you feel a little bit like you're asking people to vote for something, apart from the fact there are brilliant other documentaries in the category. Mm. You're asking people to vote for something that is sort of a source of um, sadness as well. Mm. It's like, you know, and you don't want people to be voting for that reason. But on the other hand, actually, what happened was when the documentary went out, I had an incredible response from people saying uh, people don't shine a light enough on carers. And then again, when they announced the nomination, they said, oh, gosh, it's all gone quiet. So I thought right, I'm going to do it for the people that are living this who have it much yeah. tougher than me in lots and lots of ways. Um, and I think the thing about caring is, is that it is the thing that we're all going to either need or care for. I've At listened to you, I listen to your show a lot and I know that you've been through it with your mum mm. who's, who sadly passed away. But yeah. um, uh, people don't think about the need for it until they're either in it and need themselves or they're doing it for someone they love. And if you're lucky, then it's a temporary thing and you get better and you get back on with your life. Great. And if not, it goes on and on. And I think it's a mix, especially I'm sure you've been through this as well, Sheila, where, you know, there were so many nights in hospital when I prayed to have the chance to care for Derek because I thought he, because he, you know, that was means him coming live home. or die. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and then he comes home and there's a whole different set of experiences you go through. I think the physicality of it, people don't talk about very much. It is physically very tiring, mm -hmm. particularly if people have mobility issues. Because yeah, you're, you're leaning and lugging. You're and, leaning and, 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 and stretching and, and moving and them and, and yeah. also, yeah. And, you know, and, and you can learn about the best way to protect your back. But it's, it's a, and then there's the emotional pressure because you are a little bit like, I think the only thing I could equate it to is like when you first bring the baby home from the hospital and you find you're sitting yourself looking. I've got to keep this thing alive. Uh, yeah, I've got to keep this thing alive. <laughs> it's all down to me. Um, and, and of course, you're in a constant whirlwind yeah. of, you know, fear and all of that. And it is very, very challenging. I mean, there, again, you, you saw the Instagram post, but mm. another charity, a charity called Carers First got in touch with me and said, we've just done some research this autumn. We're facing an economic crisis that everybody is facing. Mm. And people are coming to us. They have some stats. I think more than 90% of people were just not sleeping because they were so scared. Um, people were feeling suicidal. People were feeling like their mental health was tried. And c along with that genuine fear, which a lot of us have about money worries, mm. um, there is a sort of a guilt because you don't want to be feeling like anyone's a burden. Yeah. And you're very, very alone. But as, That's as, the other thing. You feel very alone. It, whether you are or you're not, it, it is yes, a lonely Yes, you could process, have a house full it? of medics yeah. and whatever, um, but it's it's a, it's an isolating feeling. And also, it as you said, either temporarily or permanently, mm. um, it transforms your life. It transforms it every bit as much as a baby arriving in your life. It does. It absolutely yeah. does. And um, because you're... You, you're having to think about everything you do, um, aren't you? And you're um, that feeling that you can't just um, a, a, a lovely sort of internet online group popped in and said, we're organising coffees for people to talk. And I thought, how wonderful that actually that is there. However, I don't know how a carer could get there <laughs> yeah, yeah. because um, unless you're, most carers can't really leave the person unless yeah. they've got someone else. And of course, we know that the support is frighteningly small. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, and if you, uh, the, what's also really 
difficult, I think, for carers is, um, I know when I was doing a lot of caring for mum, if I would visit a friend nearby yeah. for an afternoon, say, yeah. because another, because I have lots of siblings and they were caring as well, it wasn't just me, um, if they'd say, how are things? And I'd, I'd, I'd often say, don't really want to talk about it. Yeah. You know, I really genuinely wanted to talk about that nice new top you bought or yeah. how you bake this cake or what this flower is in your garden. I really didn't want to talk about it because you needed your brain to be somewhere else. Yeah, and we're lucky because we both have very supportive employers, yeah. don't we, Sheila? And we both have jobs where we can, you know, combine it to a certain extent with coming and going. But a lot of people uh, financially have to give up their work because there isn't that yeah. flexibility yeah. option. So they're literally in the house caring for somebody or um, there's two things, I think, with, with friends and family. On the one hand, you want to break from it. But on the other hand, you sometimes want to talk about it. But you're very aware that you said the same things before. A and you don't want to be this, like, ghastly, boring person well, you, who's talking about the no. same things, you I, know. I, I also think, you know... W w mm. the, whether you're still aware of it or not, Kate, I mean, people are incredibly connected to your story. Um, they really are. And because it, we were all in COVID at the same time, yeah. but some of us were hit harder by it than others, clearly. Um, you've, you've got Derek home. You got what you called your happy ending at that yeah. point for him to come home. Um, and... You know, you said it yourself. I've experienced it in a long conversation I had with him at a wedding. We both went to yes, a great conversationalist, yeah, a great, a great talker, yeah. Um, and how how is that now? Can he can he communicate better? It's very very patchy. So I don't know if it's just because I microscopically look at him Notice in the way everything. that you yeah, yeah. You, in the way that you say again talking about a baby, not that he's a baby. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, he's definitely smiling and everybody else goes, oh, right, yeah. Um, I look, it looks like wind to me. I don't know whether it's just that or whether it's... But there are definitely patches where he can say more and what he does say is sort of never wrong. He would love me saying this, by the way. <laughs> because he never suddenly says bananas when he means, you know, um, cold. But it's just that it's not the same chat that it was. Yeah. He is actually back in hospital at the moment, Sheila. He? Yeah, he had he had to sort of an emergency blues and twos re mission which we're hoping we're on the right side of yeah. so we're sort of again in the the new process of seeing how the next fight to bring him home works yeah. but yeah and it, it seems to me as well um both from watching your documentaries and also just uh, talking to a lot of people mm. who care in, on my program as well yeah um there is we have given the political backdrop to it and the funding backdrop yes. to it and the pressures that people are under financially and everything. I think we have to make caring, it seems to me, more than just politics and more than just funding. Yeah. We have to make it more of a community thing as well. So, for mm. example, it's just, it's just over a year now since I lost my mum. And for a year, I couldn't even think about offering my time and my care mm. to an elderly person, for example. I just needed to get over that you need shock. You to grieve yeah. and have that healing. But I'm, going, but I'm doing that now for the mm. winter to make so a local elderly mm. um, charity just to make sure because I, I feel I can do it now. Mm. So I've got some I've got some time to give. I've got, you know, mm. the, and, and I understand that process. So I'm going to do it. But I think we all, because the funding isn't going to be magicked up for you, for me, for anybody, yeah. we all need to look at where we live, who we know and what mm. we can give to support people, I think. Mm. And I, I think people want to do it. There mm. are just lots of barriers there for people mm. to do it. And I think the reason I wanted to invite you on to talk about your own experience and your programme and everything is there are a million different ways to be a there carer. are, and I think you're absolutely right. You know, uh, there's no doubt that the whole system needs more funding, but success, it's not really political, certainly not party political, because successive governments have, have uh, Made found the same it hard failure. <laughs> yeah. to try to crack the challenge of yeah. it. And, you know, now is not a time when there's loads of money in the bank. And I think you're right, it, it does have to be all of us. And, and maybe also... Uh, you know, there's so many movies, isn't there, where people haul somebody from a burning building or give them the kiss of life. And that is seen as glamorous. Heroic, and yeah. it is heroic. Yes. There's no doubt about that. But we somehow have to see that that caring, that sort of delicate caring and that time, it's almost like we have to, in our minds, see that that is something just as heroic and precious. That's a really good point. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I thought, well, it would be lovely if a documentary about caring won an award. Because I, I think ITV was even quite quite brave to put it on at prime time because it's not traditionally something that makes people think god i can't wait to watch that but i you think know, i think a big part of that is that people I think are fearful i they're think they're fearful but yeah. they're also connected to your story kate it's, it's about you telling it 
and you talking about the, the issue as well. Yeah. Because I, I honestly think that the only way we do, it's, this has been my experience, you know, the, the reason I became passionate about the issue of caring is because yes. I became a carer for my mother. Yes. I wouldn't, I didn't have, I mean, I, I could talk about it politically before yeah. then, but, but I talk about it. it in the gut. Yeah, I talk yeah. about it very differently now. Yeah. I feel, I think and feel about it very differently as well. And I think that's what you've achieved in all of your, in, in all well, of I your hope conversations. So. I mean, so situation. many people are right now probably listening to you as I'm sure they do in their millions, thinking, gosh, <laughs> of I'm a carer and I haven't got a voice. So yeah. I think it's lovely when people like you and I can hopefully well, I think, give a voice yeah, to that. I think yours yeah. is a very important voice. And, and my own listeners kindly said that they felt mine was for them. So that's good. That's but I, I was delighted. So listen, let's get your uh, nationaltvawards.com. <laughs> we want to see Kate win that award. You don't award. have to vote for it. There's well, lots you of do good have ones to vote there, for it. But it'd be lovely if you take, take a look. <laughs> no, people, yeah. people do. It's compulsory. They do have to vote for it because whilst it's a vote for your programme, it is a vote for, as, as you've said yourself, it's a vote for a really important issue mm. as well. So fingers crossed for you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. I know you have to dash. Thanks very much, Thank Kate. Great to have you in the studio. <laughs> 